Hello, good morning, and welcome everyone to Tools to Edit Your Digital Story and Getting It Watched by Your Target, target Audience. Uh, again, good morning. My name is Lashika Phillips, and I am an Associate Program Manager here at TechSoup, and so delighted to be here with you this morning. Before I get started, I just want to make sure that everyone is comfortable here on this platform, and I uh, want you to be aware that all of the lines are muted. So if you have any questions, feel free to use the uh, small chat box down on the lower left side of your screen. And uh, let us know if you have any questions, uh, any audio issues. Um, if you are hearing an echo, you may want to double check to see if you have an additional session of ReadyTalk open. You want to go ahead and close that out um, to remove that echo. Um, also, the telephone number, if you haven't already uh, called in, we placed that in the chat for you. And we'll give that to you again here. That number is 323-701-0223. And the passcode is 786562. And yes, this will be recorded for viewing later. I also want to tell you that if you lose connection at any time, feel free to um, just use the registration link that you received previously in your email, and that will reconnect you back uh, into, the, into the webinar. So again, if you are interested in uh, upcoming events, feel free to check out our website where we have um, all of the events that are coming up and our uh, future webinars. We have one coming up at uh, the end of this month, and I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, before we close out. Also, if you want to tweet as you are listening to this webinar, if you hear a tweetable moment, feel free to use uh, at TechSoup or use the hashtag TSWebinars. And as you know, many of you are very familiar with TechSoup and, and what we offer. Um, but for those who are new to TechSoup, uh, allow me to be the first to tell you that we are very excited and thrilled um, as we help NGOs overcome barriers to effective use of technology. And we also help NGOs overcome language, economic, geographic, cultural, knowledge, and even access barriers. If we create new ways to, to access technology and new paths to connect and, and network and new means to learn and develop. And you know what? We do all of this right here mainly from our office in San Francisco. And we have partners all over the world. And you know what? We are interested in knowing where you are joining in from today. So if you would please go ahead and chat in the chat box where you are joining from. We love to know. Oh, I see Boston. Welcome, welcome. Oh, wow, I see Nashville. Thank you for joining. This is awesome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, this is, this is, and this is why this is just amazing. Awesome, Romania. This is exciting. Well, we're going to get started. I'm so excited. We've got two great uh, presenters here today. We have Nisi uh, Adeyame, and we, all was, and we have Lewis Height, who's here with us. He's going to join us just briefly and is going to share a little bit about story makers. And then Nisi is going to join us and tell us how, now that we've got our raw video footage, how are we going to actually turn this into an amazing finished product. So. In just a moment here, let's get let's see if we can get Lewis. Lewis, are you there? Lewis, we can't hear you. Are you muted? The line is still connected. I'm not sure why we can't hear him. Hi, everyone. This is Lewis, and I am the Senior Manager at TechSoup, and I have been managing our storytelling campaign. First, we want to thank the sponsors uh, for Storymakers. 
this year in particular, Adobe came in at our platinum level sponsors. And um, as part of their sponsorship, I just want to shout out to the Adobe Creative Cloud. This is um, a tool, and it's a whole suite of Creative Cloud tools, such as Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, Illustrator. And you can get it through TechSoup. You get 60% off the Creative Cloud for the first year and 40% off for each renewal thereafter. I'm going to put the link in the chat. And uh, please you know, check out this offer. We're really excited to have Adobe as a StoryMaker sponsor and to offer the Creative Cloud. And I'm excited for today's webinar. I'm going to turn it back to Lashika. Thank you so much, Louis. That is very exciting. And now we are thrilled to be able to bring Nisi Adeyemi on, uh, on the line so she can share with us uh, what to do with this, with this footage. Thank you so much. Thank you to TechSoup. I'm excited to be back. I've actually was on a webinar earlier this year, and I did a couple last year. So I'm excited to be back to talk to you all. So today's topic, again, is going to be tools to edit your digital story and get it watched by your target audience. Uh, just a little bit about me and uh, where I'm at. I am at uh, Civic Center Library, which is um, part of the city of Scottsdale. And there's a second floor that we call Eureka Loft that we operate as a co-working space and really gear it towards entrepreneurs, small business owners, nonprofits. They all come in to network. We have classes there. And then we also have a digital media lab, which I'll show you some of the equipment in just a bit, uh, where people can come and shoot video and we help them edit it. Before we go into that, I do want to ask a couple of questions. So there's going to be a, a, a series of survey questions that I would like all of you to input so I know who I'm talking to and where you're all at. So the first one is, have you ever? So if you've done any of these, uh, click yes, edited a video, uploaded a video to YouTube, shared a video on social media, uploaded a video to a website, emailed a video link you created, or shared a video you did not create. So I'm seeing the responses come in. So edited a video, we've already got over 50, that's great. Uploaded a video to YouTube. We're looking at over almost 70 now. That's great. Shared a video to social media. Approaching uh, over 90. Uploaded a video to website. Over 60 already. Emailed a video link you created, 75. And then shared a video you didn't create, which is actually the highest one, which I almost, let's see, it's going between that and shared video on social media. Both are close to reaching 100. They're both at 98, Ooh, 99 now for a shared video you did not create. Okay, great. Thank you for that information. I like to get kind of an idea of who I'm speaking with in the room, so thank you. Okay, the next survey question is, if you've edited a video before, what editing software have you used? So just go ahead and type it in and let me know uh, what, are you guys, what you're using right now. iMovie, Premiere. NA, good, come to the right place. A lot of premieres, Movie Maker, Camtasia, YouTube, more iMovie, haven't edited a video, okay, good. Premiere, never edited. A lot of premieres in there, iMovie, Power Director, Lightworks, Adobe Premiere, okay. Adobe After Effects, ooh. Audacity Eye to Eye, Final Cut Pro, Coral Video Pro, More Movie Maker. We even have a TV producer here and a director for over 20 years. We haven't done any editing. Okay, so good. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Blender, uh, Windows Media Tool, Camtasia. Okay, great. It's good to know what you guys have been using. Thank you for that. Okay. So do you use a Mac, 
a PC or other? That's the next question. He's going to win this one. A lot of PCs coming in. Max are at around 30 right now. The PCs are definitely winning. I'm, the, I'm a Mac user, so any Mac, any other Mac users out there want to back me up? I only have almost 40. We got reaching 100 PC users. Somebody asked if there is uh, audio during the questions. Uh, you can only hear me. Everyone else is muted. So you can type in your questions and then answer the poll questions. Somebody is using an iPhone, so that would be like a other uh, for what you use as editing. Thank you for answering that. Okay, and then what uh, is your level of video editing experience? Are you beginner, intermediate, or advanced? Beginners, a lot of beginners, there's about 86 now, moving up. Intermediate 34, we have three advanced, great. Okay, just a couple more questions I want to ask. So beginners, we have 94, intermediate 36, and three advanced on the call. Okay, so this is kind of like a pop quiz before we get into everything. How long do you think the average branded video, so this will be for you know, something that you're promoting for your nonprofit um, NGO, should be? 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 1 minute, 2 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, 10 to 30 minutes, or longer than 30 minutes. And this is on average for a successful video that people would actually watch. Thirty seconds is winning right now. We have nobody staying longer than thirty minutes. One, ten to thirty minutes. About six of you, five to ten minutes. Thirty-one over two minutes. One minute, thirty-five minutes. I'm sorry, thirty-five uh, responses. And then 54 responses for 30 seconds and 12 for 15 seconds. Okay, great. The last one, I think there should be one more. Oh, there's the answers right there. Okay, great. Oh, and we actually have the responses for the other ones. You can see that. Let me just take a quick look. Okay, so we just get the responses coming through. Okay, great. Thank you guys all for completing that. I really wanted to get an idea of where we all stand. So what we're going to cover today is choosing the right editing tool, organizing your assets, working with audio, working with graphics and photos, editing your video, uploading your video, sharing and promoting your video, using the right keywords, and growing your audience. is a kind of an idea of what we use in the digital media lab that I spoke a little bit about earlier. So I do work in the digital media lab uh, for the city of Scottsdale. So we offer patrons an opportunity to come in and shoot their videos. And we have myself and some additional staff, including two volunteers and an intern that will help set up the equipment, shoot the video, and then also edit the video for them. We also have a volunteer photographer that comes in and we'll do photos, and then we also teach digital media classes. So last night I taught a branding your business class. So we do get a lot of response and get pretty booked on there. So if, I saw a couple of people in Scottsdale. And so if you're in Scottsdale and you need to utilize the lab, definitely contact me. I'll put up my email address again. So we definitely invite you uh, to come in and take advantage. And all of this that we offer is absolutely free. So my – as some of you talked about what you're using, whether you have a Mac or a PC, it really does depend when it comes to free editing tools. So on your Mac or your iPhone or any um, smart device that would have access to iOS, 
iMovie is usually your go-to tool when you're talking about a free editing software. It's usually already on that equipment for you. For your PC, it'll uh, be Windows Movie Maker. Most people should have that. The uh, more recent Windows Movie Makers has a few more advanced things that you can do on there as well. So there's some good news and bad news I'm going to share with you all. Some of you may know it, but the great news is that Avid, which is really the industry standard for all you know, movies that are produced in Hollywood, uh, major production companies, they use Avid as their editing software. They have actually come out with a free editor called Media Composer First. So you can download it. I have the link on the slide deck, and I'm sure the good people at uh, TechSoup will uh, provide this presentation to you guys after class, where you can go download it completely free. This isn't a free trial. This is free software from them. There is an option to do a free trial for, the, for their professional grade editor, but uh, from what I see, this one has some pretty great uh, options. I'm sure there's going to be a few limitations to what it offers versus the professional grade, but this is absolutely amazing that they're now open this up and offered free editing. So even if you don't, and you can use this on a PC, a Mac, you know, on your computer, on either one. So definitely take, uh, take advantage of that. So that's the great news. The bad news, last year when, we, uh, when I was on the webinar, we talked about how you could actually upload your videos to YouTube, uploading clips, individual clips, and actually edit it directly on YouTube. Unfortunately, since last month, they've actually discontinued YouTube Editor. Their explanation was that not a lot of people are using it, so they didn't feel it was necessary. Uh, and it was a really basic tool. You couldn't do a lot. It's not like you could put additional, you know, many different audio tracks or anything. But a lot of people found that that was the only thing that they were using. So I did see a lot of complaints online and so forth. Uh, but so they do still offer enhancement tools, which are some great tools that you can do once you've uploaded an edited video, all of your clips onto YouTube. You can use. Uh, some of their tools to auto-fix lighting or color, stabilize the shaky camera shot. So, you know, if you didn't use a tripod, you could, you could use that. Apply slow motion and apply time lapse, which is really cool. So if you recorded an event throughout the day and you wanted to use a time lapse, you just uploaded the regular video you, you created and you can apply the time lapse. You can still trim parts of the video. It would just be that one video that you've uploaded, and you can trim the beginning and the end. You just can't add additional video. Uh, and then you can also rotate the view, apply filters, uh, do some custom blurring, and also blur out faces, which can sometimes be necessary if you haven't gotten permission. We'll just talk about that, you know, just to make sure you guys, once you've done a beautiful job, that you have permission from everybody to be on the video. So I use Premiere, and we use, I use that personally, and then we also use that in the Digital Media Lab. So I was actually uh, happy to see that TechSoup has, also has uh, gotten a promotion code for you guys for Adobe Creative Cloud. Premiere is part of Adobe Creative Cloud, so if you're looking to use it, definitely take advantage of the promo, uh, promotion that TechSoup is offering uh, because you know, it is a monthly fee that you purchase for the whole Creative Cloud. Premiere is one of the software. There's also Photoshop, InDesign for graphic, um, uh, creating uh, layouts for graphic materials, and they've got you know web building tools and auto um, audio fixing tools. So it's a great software to have, especially if you're planning on creating videos. Uh, editing videos, and possibly at least having somebody on your team doing that, something great to look into. So like I said, that's what I personally use on there. There's a link down below to lynda.com that also provides really great videos on how to edit. Uh, we're not technically going into like how to upload on each individual software today because everybody uses so many different tools. They're all very similar, but they work differently. So it makes more sense for you to do one-on-one uh, -on -one training, either it be a video, 
uh, YouTube, you can do it, lynda.com. I host one-on-ones in the digital media lab where people can come meet with me and get some one-on-one editing training. I've just learned through my experience that really actually works best because everybody's on different levels. So I also wanted to provide more links for additional free editing tools. So this is from what I've heard from other people that they've used. I don't use all the free ones. Like I said, I use Premiere. Uh, so definitely give me feedback, especially with the Avid uh, free version. I would love to hear. Like I said, I'll give my email address again. You know, let me know how it's working for you if you do decide to use it, and uh, you know how you've um, how how is that experience. So you can look at uh, all of those there, and I've provided the link. Now let's say you. And you've created your video, maybe you've done a couple of editing, or you don't even want to attempt to do it. Well, there are some options for editing to be done for you. Uh, for example, there's a website called animoto.com, which you would just upload your finished uh, clips up there, and they will actually uh, provide you an edited video. They can do this for, for personal use, for professional use, so it would include all of the videos you want to create for your nonprofit. The, the free version does have their watermark on your video. So they do offer a free version, but you'll see Animoto all over the video. You know, it's a little watermark that they're going to post. You can, you can uh, do a paid version, and I just got this from their website. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but I have used it, so it's worked for some of the stuff that I've used and some of the patrons have used as well. So this starts at $8, $22, and then $34 um, for those prices if you're thinking of it. I would only really go into paying for – you can try it out, like use the free version, see if it works for the first one, and if not, uh, you know, you can go ahead and – I mean, if it does work, then, you know, try to upgrade if you want to get a video that doesn't have their watermark on it. Then there's also Fiverr.com, and I'll put an asterisk on there. but uh, this is a website where you can go and get so many services, and the reason it's called Fiverr is because it starts at five dollars, and people are willing to do this work. And a lot of them, uh, you know, are all over the country. One thing I will say is definitely make sure you read the reviews. Uh, you know, this isn't a blatant endorsement that you're going to get the best, amazing work out of everything. There's some hit and misses. Some people have gotten great reviews. Some people are not. So if you want to look and say, you can just put in video editing and see the work that they've done doesn't match the type of quality that you're looking for. So, uh, yes, we'll have access to all the slides. Uh, TechSoup should provide that link to you guys. So, yes, if you have a question, thank you for asking. So uh, it's, a great, it's a great site to check it out. Uh, you can make everything from logos there. There's the people that make explainer videos, everything from even uh, influencer marketing that you can you know, purchase. So look at the prices. Look at the reviews. Make sure the reviews are authentic. And you know, definitely, uh, if you're interested in having somebody help you with it, it's a great tool to use that is much less expensive. Okay, and then I also wanted to share with you Canva.com. So Canva is a place where you can make uh, templated graphic designs, but it's great for if you want to create input graphics to your video, whether it be just a graphic page, your contact page, or contact information, logo, any type of imagery design or a nice layout for photos, you can actually use Canva and uh, they have also, it's a freemium tool, so many of their templates and their images are free, and then they also have some that are $1, or you can pay a $10 monthly fee and be able to use some more of their upgraded features. One of the features, for example, is if you're creating, like, let's say, a layout of a page and you've done a, a certain size, in order to change that size, you have to upgrade to so make sure you know the size prior to that um, so that you won't have to upgrade necessarily. Okay, so let's talk about you've done all of your shooting. I know you've done, we've, uh, TechSoup had the other webinars talking about the production and the pre-production phase. So you've gotten your, your shots. They look amazing. Uh, We'll go through the steps of what you need to do to, to, to get your video ready for uploading. So one of the first things I do 
is gather, organize, and label all of my shops. So I'm watching them. I'm seeing what works, especially if I took multiple takes. I'll, you know, put use this take and give a description on the actual label and then put them in folders. So it's your shots. It's your, it's your other graphics that you're going to be using. You want to organize them and graph and, uh, and label them. So when I say a shot, what that means is it's a continuous piece of film from when you hit start to stop. So they're literally like the clips that you're considering. So you want to make sure each one of those are labeled and you know uh, which ones you're going to use. Sometimes you have some test shoots you can delete. And then also back up. Have a backup for your backup. You know, if you've used a camera, if you use your phone, try to transfer your file somewhere else while you're editing so you have a backup just in case anything happens to the computer you're using and anything happens to any of your files that you actually have a backup to do that. I do that with the uh, files that I, I use. Um, we're editing with the patrons where we'll back it up actually two different places until I'm done you know, then we can clean it up and make sure that, you know, all the files I don't need anymore. So back up all of your work. So uh, if you recorded audio separately, you want to obviously make sure that you have the audio files same, uh, saved the same way you have saved the video files so we can match it up easier. And then there's also uh, where you would select your music and how you're going to select your uh, and create either your images and your and your graphics. So one of the one of the things I want to talk about before we go into where you're going to select some of this stuff is uh, the copyright issue for photography and music. Once you're done with your video, you do at times want to have some type of music underlaid into your video uh, and uh, use some images that you may have made or may not have created yourself. So we're going to look at what is copyright. When do you have what? you have permission to use? Are you going to create it? Is it better to borrow or buy? You know, and the quality of your photos and protecting your photos, your videos, and your music that you've created yourself. So copyright is just the legal right granted to an author, composer, playwright, publisher, or distributor to exclusive publication, production, sale, and distribution of a literary, uh, literary music, dramatic, or artistic work. So there are some other uh, links that you can read about that more. But basically, everything you find online, you know, every scene, anything you saw created on YouTube, any famous person's song, whatever you can hear on Spotify, the radio, you cannot just say, oh, I'm going to use this music for my video, especially, especially when it comes to business, nonprofits, organizations. You know, you cannot just upload that music to your video created and then uploaded to YouTube. YouTube actually has some parameters built in place where they can tell if you've uploaded copywritten uh, content and they'll either block your video, not upload it, or sometimes they'll put a link onto that song and uh, make it uh, that where somebody can purchase it or they might put ads that don't belong to you on your video based on what the owner of the copyright has said. So they could copyright could say, no, I want all songs that are, you know, that have my, all, you know, videos that have my songs on there to be pulled down. Or I want to be paid, you know, for through marketing or a link for the, for the, through the photo or the, um, the music. Okay. So if, you do get into that situation where you've mistakenly used a, co uh, a copywritten song. There's a link there to provide to say what you're going to do. There are some actions you can take, but you don't want to be a constant person that's getting in trouble for this because your, your account can totally be shut down. Okay. Okay, so... You can also find out who actually owns the rights to the music. There are times where people want to use a certain song, you know, uh, and there are some actual uh, 
this website is actually going to take you to the exact owners for many of the songs where you can look and say who owns it, who's the pro- who owns the, um, the production company, and the contact information for some of them. There are also websites that uh, do covers of certain songs that are much cheaper. So if I wanted to get a really famous, well-known song, I might have to pay $30,000. So, you know, that might not be part of my budget. But if I did the cover of a song, and paid rights for that, it's going to, it may be much cheaper. So there's times where you can find songs that you really wanted to use and might not be that expensive. So uh, there are different, when it comes to copyright and, you know, options to use uh, music and other content, there are different terms that you have to think about. So public domain means that there's no restrictions whatsoever, no copyright claim, not, and it's not possible in some countries, but here in the United States it is. So if it is in public domain and there is a website that offers public domain music and different things that you can do, you want to uh, take advantage of that. Creative Commons basically is that you just have to comply with the state stated restrictions of the owner. So what they're telling you, you can use it for. And many times, especially like on YouTube, if there is a video or some other sites, the owner will tell you, what you can use it for. This is 100% free for personal use. If you want to use it for business, which all of you would probably fall under, you need to contact them for their terms. That's what they usually would say. Or you cannot use this for business, or you can, but I need to get credit, or you know, my logo or my contact information needs to be there if you use it. So they'll give you some parameters. Okay, and the royalty fee free means that you buy a license once and you can use the work according to that license. So in the ter- when it comes to video images, uh, things that have already been created and music and certain things, there is a part of the law that's called fair use, which is more so for like news-related content if you're doing a review. I would kind of stay straight, still stay clear away from when it comes to music. But when it comes to reporting on, of, you know, using a video content for news-related to do some type of criticism, news reporting, research, teaching, there are those instances where you can use content that you didn't create and is copywritten for those purposes. I don't think any of what we're doing here necessarily falls in there unless you're creating a news-based uh, video. But other than that, once again, stay away from copywritten content. Let me go back one. Okay, so here are some links where you can get public domain royalty-free music. Let's see, there's a question that says, if you're using uh, archival video of a scripted play you produce, can you use the clip from the production without violating copyright laws? I think that uh, you probably just want to make sure that you get permission, if possible, from whoever if you produced it, you should be fine. But even when, like, you know, like some people that are either in the photo or person that's saying, sometimes there's still the producer that has the say. So just checking to make sure is there anyone else that could claim possible, uh, you know, claim it that say, oh, no, you're using my content and as long as you have the permission to do so. Uh, so this is, uh, provides you links to where you can get public domain, royalty-free, and Creative Commons licenses music. YouTube has an audio library, and even in that, you still need to look at each and every song and see what the creator is telling you can do. There are some Creative Commons content and music that says, I need to get credit if you use my song. Some say completely free public domain. So go through and look through all of that and see that, okay? And then Free Music Archive, once again, gives you a lot of different genres of instrumentals you can use for your videos. And I encourage people, especially let's say you're doing an interview or somebody's talking, get the instrumental of the songs. I've heard videos where you can hear, you know, voice lyrics in the songs and you have somebody speaking over it. So this should be like, you know, more common sense that you shouldn't do that, but just, just a reminder not to do that. Ha- use instrumentals, especially if you have somebody else speaking, you know, and there's the music underneath it. So those are the links to get that. And then I have some links underneath that will give you some answers to some top questions that you may have. So this is an example of what you would find in the YouTube audio library. 
I clicked on one song, which you can see it's the eviction song, and it says, you're free to use this song in any of your videos. So that's clear. You don't have to worry about it. You can do whatever you want with that song. Use it. Here's another one that says, uh, you're free to use this song in any of your videos, but you must include the following in your video description. And this is basically giving them credit. And so all of that must be included in your video. So just follow the rules, and you won't have any issues if you want to use some of this music for your video. Okay, so there are some places where you can get free stock photos as well. So when it would be a time when you would use stock photos, stock videos, versus your content. You want to do as much as you can on your own, getting videos you've created, photos you've taken of, you know, the content that you're sharing. But there are going to be times where you need to fill in the gaps or, you know, you just can't get that content yourself. So for, there's really great images out there right now. So I'm sharing some links now for where you can get some free stock images. So one of them is freestockphotos.org. has a lot of great content on there. And then here's some other ones, uh, freeimages.com, Pixabay I use all the time for my presentations. Uh, there's free images, one that's another one for the UK version, but that has some different images that you can still take advantage of. Uh, openclipart.org, I believe it's a um, government-based clip art uh, website that you can get clip, clip art from. And uh, there's some, there's the, the next one is the Noun Project, which is, has so many different icons you can use. Uh, so if you were going to do like an explainer video or do some different things like that, you would be able to uh, download those. And then Wikimedia has a website that has uh, some content that you can use as well. And here's some more that you can use. Another one that I use a lot is called Unsplash, and they have really high-quality uh, photos. And that's another thing I want to remind everyone is make sure your photo quality, your image quality matches your video quality. So you definitely don't want to have a really small image that you have to expand and it's pixelated. You really want it to be high quality content that you're putting on there. Uh, you do have the opportunity to, all of this is free, but like for example for Pixabay, each of the photographers has a link to their images, and it says, hey, you want to buy them coffee? So if you've used a lot of your fo their photos and you really enjoy their work, you can donate any amount that you want. There's nothing specified. So feel free to do that if you feel like they've done a great job. Okay, and then you can also get actual video uh, templates as well. So if you need some type of B-roll, so A-roll is the main video that you're going to use. Maybe you're doing an interview, you've got an on-set video, but you need some additional video for uh, while somebody's talking, maybe had a cut, you can actually download some of that. Once again, I use Pixabay a lot for that. So uh, they have videos. You can select where you want to find them. Uh, you can select what you're looking for, whether it be uh, images, videos, you know, all of that. Uh, when you do go onto that site, for example, the first row of options usually comes from Shutterfly, I believe it's called, and that actually is a paid images or paid video. So you have to look past the first row and look at the other rows to get all the free stuff. So you just put in your keywords, and it'll show you what you have and the, what they have. And there's a lot of uh, great opportunities for that. I just edited a video for a patron that we used some B-roll from Pixabay as they were and talking about their technology company, and we found some great uh, content for that. Obviously, the only slight thing of using all of this uh, stock images is has it been used before? Is it something that other people can see and say, hey, I've seen that before somewhere else? So you do take that risk, you know, of not having original content on your, uh, your videos and um, the images that you're using. So do keep that in mind. But it's definitely a great tool if you want to have additional stuff. Okay, so somebody's asking, I've seen videos where a hand is writing and printed text in a uniform font appears. Is there a program or app for that? So that's called whiteboarding. And yes, there are programs for that. And there's people that actually do that. There was a lady that came to the library. She has a website called framethemessageinc.org, I believe. And uh, she does 
whiteboarding. And there's also explainer videos where it's more than just the hand drawing, but uh, there is also like cartoon images of and somebody doing a voiceover. You can actually get that on Fiverr too at a, at a reasonable cost. A lot of times when I look at the web on websites that offer it, it's really expensive. You're looking at, you know, I've seen two thousand, four thousand dollars for one video. Fiverr is going to give it to you for fifty, two hundred and fifty, you know, much less than that. And then you can also uh, there are some apps I believe that you can download and pay for, and then you basically would put it in your voiceover, and then it will create the whiteboard for you. And some people use uh, clip art to create their whiteboard videos as well. So if it's something you don't feel like you are an expert in doing, I would just you know, try to find the most reasonable way to do it, probably Fiverr, um, Frame the Message, Inc.org, I believe it could be .com. She does a lot of great videos uh, for education and nonprofits as well, so check that out. So this site, this uh, is talking about uh, the photo quality of your images. Uh, okay, somebody else is asking if uh, the, the slides will be available. Yes, absolutely. I will actually the chairperson should ask that I can to confirm, but I'm believing that a link to the slides will be available. I can send it out to them again if they need that. But thank you very much. Uh, so photo quality versus size. So there are different types of images you want to put on your videos versus like, you know, your marketing materials or even your website. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, images, not just videos. So the ping is usually going to have a, a, a transparent background, and then JPEG is going to be more of your photo images uh, that people are using. Formatting the sizing of videos have grown, so, have grown so much today. We now offer 4K videos that you can create, and, and YouTube will probably eventually be able to upload it. But unless somebody has a screen or TV or a, a laptop that can watch 4K, they're not going to be able to see it. So I would suggest using either a 720p or 1080p for your video size. So obviously think about that before you edit because you'd rather shoot in that size. It's easier to go from uh, higher quality to lower quality, but if you shot in standard, you can't you know, export it into a, a high-definition video. Okay? So a lot of people are using 1080p. Um, which is just the number of pixels that are in there versus, uh, you know, anything else. Standard definition is definitely not the way to go anymore. And, you know, even iPhones, I have an iPhone that I can shoot in 4K. But like I said, uh, unless the person that's watching it has conceived 4K, they're not really going to see it anyway. So see the next available uh, type of high-quality video that they can see. Uh, so for your, there's two different, usually different types of graphics that you can use. There's the raster, which is more pixel based. Which let's say you created something in Photoshop, that's what you're going to get. And then there's the vector graphic, which is more scalable. So if you were to create a logo or a graphic image in vector, which you can do in Illustrator or get somebody on Fiverr or somebody else to do it for you. Uh, I also recommend always getting the different types of files that they have. So sometimes they'll give you the JPEG version, the ping version, and then the files they actually create, the original source files. Get those too from whoever created it. Also get the colors, something called hex number, H-E-X number to know what colors they're using. So your branding can be consistent across. Uh, and then the font name of what you use, what they what they created for you, what you're using. There's a website called The Font, which is D-A-S-O-N-T dot com, that gives you all kinds of uh, options for fonts. Same thing with the creators. They're going to tell you whether you can use it for free personal use or use it for any kind of use. And if it is for commercial use, and they didn't say it's completely free, you have to contact them and let them know. Okay, so let's see. If you have, let me see if I can answer a few questions. But you have multiple versions of the video for different platforms. Yes. You want to make sure that your video is mobile friendly. Uh, and sometimes, depending on where you're uploading it, like if you're going to upload it to YouTube or a WordPress-based website, it's going to automatically make it responsive for you. Uh, but they're not every single platform is going to do that. You may have to make sure that you've created a content that is uh, responsive. Especially, let's say you are going to go to local channel to do a commercial, they're going to tell you what. And that's the one time they're probably going to tell you you need standard definition video because they still haven't upgraded some of them to um, high quality. 
one is the best video format to work on all platforms. It would either be a .mov uh, format or MP3. Usually those two are the ones. Both of those can upload to YouTube. Normally what's going to happen is you're going to initially upload your video to YouTube and then share it to your, uh, your website, to your social media. Uh, let me just go quickly over because I know we only have a few more minutes left. Make sure that you use your graphics and your logos but not other people's logos, or lo logos that you don't have permission for. Your logo should be branded. When you create videos, I, I usually have an intro that's branded so it's consistent and then the exit. Uh, most of the time, there are going to be some, you know, like real live behind the scenes video that are not necessarily going to be branded. But if you've already created that, then it makes editing a lot easier as well. So you picked your branded logo, your music that's going to be consistent, your colors, always in the beginning and the end. So make sure you include that as well. Must get permissions for everyone. So uh, I do have a link to a, a release form a sample. One thing you can also do on video, which I've done before, is if I'm recording and I forgot my release form, I'll ask them on the video, do you give me the permission to record you on video? And they'll tell me yes and their name. And that actually will hold up, and then, you know, you can get them to sign later, but, you know, uh, at least get them uh, their permission verbally minimum and then have a, these release forms. For minors, obviously, you have to get their parents' uh, permission. If for any reason you have minors that you're shooting that you don't have the permission for, you can't put them in your video, you have to blur them out. A lot of people would just shoot the back of the head uh, if you don't have the permission. And then make sure the location you also have the permission to shoot as well. So these are just some tips for editing. You want to make sure that you hook them from the start. Each person has, each video, you literally have five seconds to get people in. And each of your videos that you're edited should be focused on a single story. And then consider your tone as well. Is it something that you're trying to gain sympathy from, excite, you know, excite, make them laugh? The music that you choose is also going to help for that as well. So your story is very important. You have to put that first. You want to have engaged an audience that's going to connect to your audience, and you want to decide uh, what visuals, music, graphics, and permissions. So that's kind of an uh, overview. So practice makes perfect. So you want to make sure when you do it, look at it, and you don't have to put every single thing you shot. It's better to take more than you use, but you know, cut. You have to cut some things out that are not, you know, actually crucial to the editing that you're using. So practice makes perfect on that. So I did ask the question about how long viewers will watch, and there was a study that was done that says 59% of viewers will watch a video to completion that is less than one minute. So that's the answer. One minute or less should be your branded video content. If you're putting it on a TV commercial, sometimes you have to make it 30 seconds, 15 seconds. But those, the types of videos we're trying to create, those are likely um, – the, the timing you're going to have. There are going to be certain situations, documentary types of videos where it's going to be longer, especially when you've already created a following and you have a group of people that are really interested in your content. Those are the times you can go longer. So it's not that this is like solid, like you must only do minute videos. We're just telling you how long people normally would last. So as, as you grow your following, it's easier for people to stay. So uh, this is going to give you some ideas of how to target your audience once you've created the video. So thinking of them in mind, you can get feedback from other people and see, is this something that could reach my target audience? Would they enjoy this? And just keep going. Uh, make sure you also include a, a call to action. You want to tell people what you want them to do. What are you trying to get out of this video? Do you want them to share it? Do you want them to sign up for a, a demo? Do you want them to, uh, you know, donate? Do you want them to subscribe? Do you want them to come to an event? Be clear about the reason why you're creating that video. Okay, so let's look quickly about some other places to share uh, your video. So just some examples, YouTube, Facebook, your website, your branded content should absolutely be your website. That's your destination hub. That's where everything starts. Then you can share if you do have other social media sites, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, email links, Vimeo. Uh, and if 
you know, young people these days, depending on target audience, they're all constantly online. So video is definitely the number one watch thing. We won't go through all the slides today, which I knew we wouldn't get to, but definitely check it out because there's a lot of statistics to talk about the growth of video online, what people are doing online. The majority of people online today are watching video, so you want to take advantage of that. And uh, then you just want to be able to – what I have here is to get you started if you don't have a YouTube account. So you can uh, YouTube, Gmail, Google, they're all one big happy family. So I took some screenshots and some steps on how to create, you create a Google account. If you don't have a Gmail that's related to your nonprofit, you create that first because that name that you use is going to be your YouTube channel. Okay. The URL for fonts is uh, dafonts.com, dafonts.com. And it will just take you to the steps. These are going to be some of the supported YouTube files uh, that you can upload. But like I said, the majority of them are usually .mp4 files. I think I said MP3 earlier. That's actually audio. MP4 is the other version for a video file. And you can. Uh, this is an option where you can use um, some, some something in uh, YouTube that helps you promote your. Uh, call to action at the end of your video. So take a look at that. And let me show you one more thing. YouTube also has the option to help promote your video if you have a nonprofit that's approved by them. So there's a link on there. So uh, other ways to market your video really quick. Uh, if you do have videos on your website, people stay on there longer, uh, up to two minutes on average longer on your website, so that's going to retain them. Send, a, send your videos through email. Put video on the email link, and people have uh, email uh, open rate of 19% higher and increased click-through uh, click rate 65% just by putting video on that subject line. So that, I'm going to stop there. I believe my time is up, but there's a lot of other wonderful facts that you can you can upload. Here's my contact information again. Both of them, the email addresses come to me. Email me. Tell me about your videos, you know, uh, how you're working and how you're, uh, if you used Avid or any of the video uh, links, let me know. So thank you guys again. I appreciate it. So I'll hand it over to Liz if she's over there. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much, Nipi. That was a lot of information, a lot of great information. We actually have a few more minutes if, we, if you want to take some, uh, some more questions. It looks like, the, and I believe you did repeat the website for the fonts, uh, the font website. Did you share that again? Yeah, so it's dafont.com, dafont.com is where you can go. And the cool thing about that website is you can actually put in the name of your business or whatever you're trying to get a logo for, and it will show you mm -hmm. an example of how those fonts would look like using it. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, uh, someone has a question. They said that their logo was sent to them in the JPEG format. They also have it in a PDF, AI, EPS, and uh, GIF. And they want to know which would be the vector file. Okay, the vector file is the AI file. That is the Illustrator file. So that that's the one that is the most scalable. Okay. So it's great that they sent you all of those. That's good. You need all of those, yeah. Yeah, that is great. Um, yeah. Also, uh, it looks like there's a question about I rem you mentioned all the different permissions and releases that we would need to have to do the videos. Um, and so is there a draft? of these different types of releases or permissions that you can share or you can direct us? Yeah, so on the web on the page I put the permissions. There is a simple draft that I I, I uh, created or I created uh, the link to. I didn't create it myself, but there is a link for okay. that. So yeah, uh-huh. Okay, um, great. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, also on that same uh, same I'll page there, with yeah. the the releases, um, someone had a great question. When you talk about location permission, who actually gives the permission for that location? So should a nonprofit reach out to the executive director? Um, what's the best way to handle that? So it really depends on what location we're talking about. I would just say, first of all, try to go with mom, moms and pops stores and locations that are owned by the owner. If you go into an Apple store, 
it's not likely you're going to get permission. There's too much red tape. If you're trying to uh, shoot in, in, in your city, for example, the city has their information of where, you know, there's huge paperwork. Like, for example, if you're going to shoot on public property um, or for the city-owned property that you have to fill out. So the cities also have information. So private property, you need to go to the owner. If it's somebody that is there on hand, it's easier to get that permission. Uh, if you're going to big companies, you're going to have a lot of red tape to get that permission. Okay, and thank you so much. And some things are public, mm -hmm. so you don't always have to get permission, but you can check. Okay, okay. This is all great. I mean, this is a lot of information. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many um, messages I've received. Everyone wants these slides. Everyone needs these links. And it sounds like people are ready to make their videos yeah. and, and get started with Story Makers. So that's really exciting. Great. Is there anything else you want to share before we close out, Nisi? That's all. Thank you guys all for joining, and I, I wish you all lots of success in your videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So again, everyone, thank you again for joining um, joining the webinar. As I mentioned before, um, all of the links will be available um, right after this uh, webinar. You'll receive an email with the slides, um, and like I said, all the links are there. Um, again, Storymakers, it ends October 31st, and uh, so we're looking forward to seeing your video. Uh, again, use hashtag Storymakers2017, and uh, we are looking forward to, to you being a part of that. And uh, also, the link has been shared out. For you there, and so and please share share this webinar with your colleagues and with your community. And again, tweet us what you've learned. You have the contact information for Nisi. Uh, feel free to reach out, and you know that um, there are the next event. Let's see here. There it is, October twenty fourth. Getting started with social media for your library. So if you run a library or you know someone who does and they need help with social media, hey, October 24th is, is a good time to join in and, and get some more, some more nuggets like we did today. So again, thank you, Nisi. Thank you, everyone, for joining from all over the world. This has been great. Look for that email with all of these resources. And we look forward to seeing you at, at our next webinar. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.